Les damos la cordial bienvenida a la doctora Elizabeth Bob. Until she was 18 years old 
and went into therapy and something happened in that therapy that made her think that her father had molested her. She filed a lawsuit against her father. The whole family was completely destroyed. And so the question arises, you know, what, what is happening here? Is it possible that people can really be raped for 11 years and be completely unaware of it until two years later when they go into therapy? There is no credible scientific support for the idea that memory works this way. And yet, many individuals were suing their parents, their former neighbors, their former doctors, their former relatives, based on these kinds of claims. When I began to get involved in these court cases, usually on behalf of a person who was accused of these crimes, and usually in, as an expert in the legal case against an individual like Mr. Ramona, uh, and I started seeing all of these strange kind of memory claims that were being introduced into these trials, I, I thought, you know, we need to rewrite the oath that witnesses take when they get on the stand. And so I rewrote the solemn oath um, that and I think this is a much better oath because it more correctly reflects what's going on in the mind. A witness should be swearing to tell the truth, the whole truth, or whatever it is you think you uh, remember. Well, I and many uh, psychologists in North America uh, have become involved in these kinds of court cases. But we come to the cases not as clinical psychologists, but as people who do research in the area of memory and memory distortion. And so in my own work on memory distortion, I first began many decades ago by doing studies where we would show people a simulated crime or a simulated accident, and we would try to change a detail in the memory of witnesses for that crime or accident. And so in one of my early studies, we showed people an accident where a car comes to an intersection with a stop sign, and then we might ask a leading question some suggestive information that suggests that it was a yield sign. And when we do that, we can get many people to then tell us they saw a yield sign, even though what they really saw was the stop sign. They fell for the suggestion, and they think that's what they saw. So we did hundreds of these studies, showing you could distort memory for a detail here and there about an event that actually was seen. But after I began to get involved in the repressed memory cases, where people were coming, Holly Ramona, for example, was coming up with a memory of being forced to have sex with a family dog, 